<laughs> hey, we have less than 10,000 to go. Riding across Hicks Road, we enter Sierra Azul Preserve. It is 19,300 acres in the Santa Cruz Mountains. By far the biggest preserve we'll visit today. We flow quickly around the curve of the Guadalupe, Guadalupe headwaters drainage, then start climbing. Our legs burn like fire as we climb a steep gravel road of about 18% gradient. The approach to the summit of El Sombrero, elevation 2,999 feet above sea level. I hike my bike in the shadow of Mount Hominum, 3,486 feet above sea level to the south. Marshall and Christoph wait for me at the crux and we hike together as our feet struggle to find traction on the loose talus that covers the steep road segment. Two electric bikers pass us as we climb. For the native people that came before us, this land is their creation point on earth. Amanam translates to the place of the hummingbird from Matsun to English. The deeper meaning is that for these people, the universe was created here. These tribes made a life in this region for generations until the 1700s when Spanish occupation began and their hunter-gatherer culture was killed off by disease, slavery, war, and the classes, the clashes, the budding agricultural civilization of the mission time period brought to the settlements of the Silicon Valley. We stopped briefly at the summit of El Sombrero and then began our rolling descent on the Kennedy Ridge Line. The steepness of the road has allowed it to be eroded by water in the rainy season. Deep ruts for a gravel bike must be ollied over at speed. On a full suspension, the bike rolls over this type of train, no problem. On a gravel grinder, it is hyper-focused line picking. On the second roller, I jump a bump in the road made to reduce erosion. The handlebars sink when I land, and for a split second, I think they're broken. I brake lightly, trying to maintain control of the bike and prevent it from crashing. The back end slides out of control for what seems like a long time, and I stay on top of it and get some traction as the brakes do their job and my speed slows. Now that I have control of the bike again, I move my eyes from the path ahead to the handlebars and confirm they are not broken, just tilted down at the fork stem attachment. Deep breaths, and I hike a bike up the steep hill side of this roller. Marshall and Kristoff are still ahead. I catch them at the top of Kennedy Ridge and we descend together slowly, crowded segment of the trail. We turn onto pavement and take Kennedy to the town of Los Gatos for our first and only resupply. We made it to Los Gatos around 11.30 a.m., nine and a half hours to go. The community is affluent, quaint, and the town bustling. Down the road from Manresa, the Michelin-starred restaurant the area is known for. We stop at the 7-Eleven across the street from the old high school. Cheap, trashy food to help offset the calorie debt we were building on our quest. I got two strawberry milks, each with 23 grams of protein, 290 calories, and 39 grams of sugar, and a lot of salt. That's three times the sugar of a single cliff shot for about the same price. For my, mo no, my non-liquid diet items, I purchased 
two chicken tenders, and three taquitos, each with its own variety of processed dankness. Marshall got a chocolate milk and Gatorade. Kristoff got only one chocolate milk. This put me as the winner for the most variety of easy foods and calories for this resupply. Next, we stopped at Cafe Dio for coffee, water, and a better atmosphere to eat some food and take a short break. The milk was delicious, and my body had a kick of energy from the caffeine from the coffee. We hit the road again and widened our way through the urban streets as we approached the next preserve, St. Joseph's Hill, 273 acres. We climbed Jones Trail Road, heading west again. I hiked my bike up the steep sections, and I began to feel a bit nauseous from the concoction of crap I just put in my stomach. Fortunately, I did not eat and drink everything from my resupply. I saved one taquito and one strawberry milk. My food strategy for long days on the bike is all about eating as much as possible in terms of protein, calories, salts, and fats without making myself sick. Sugars are good too. It's a tricky balance and it's all about trying to eat as much small amounts of food constantly as possible and using a liquid diet such as milk strategically. The gravel road through St. Joseph's was crowded with midday hikers. We moved slow on the downhill to respect them and their place in nature as much as possible. Green toyon shrubs flank both sides of the path. Oak trees grow above them. And we leave this small preserve quickly and transition onto Alma Bridge Road and began our loop around the Lexington Reservoir. This reservoir was built mid-century, 1952, and has 450 acres of surface area when full. Before the tech industry, Silicon Valley was an agricultural hub, and storing water was a core strategy for supporting the economy. Beneath the reservoir lies two ghost towns, sacrificed for the expansion of man-made agricultural land. Kristoff leads the way, Marshall drafts behind him. I'm still working to keep my food down and watch the crew, team rowers, and longboats pull their way across the water. This road has big, sweepy, windy sweeps around Lime Kiln Canyon and Soda Springs Canyon. Topography that is exciting on a bike. I lean into the corners and tuck forward on down the hill and begin to close the gaps between me and my friends. On the western end of the reservoir, we head north again and climb the road segment up to Old Santa Cruz Highway, then descend through the second redwood, second growth redwood forest, heading east again, turning on Black Mountain Road. We are at elevation 665 feet and begin a 1,200 foot road climb to our next preserve. The road is steep and we're still hot in the midday sun. I take a lead easy climbing gears, which are still not that easy at 25 gear inches, uh, 27. Still, I push through as we pass Christmas tree farms nearing the top of the climb. More second growth redwood stands appear. The air is cooler beneath the shady canopy of these giant trees. It's wonderful to pass beneath them out of the sun. We transition back to gravel as we enter Sanborn County Park, a preserve of, of 3,453 acres. We travel north on John D. Nicholas Trail and agree to have a rest at a small picnic table next to a massive old growth Douglas fir. At around 300 feet tall, with a trunk the size of a small car, this tree has been a guardian of this next realm within our grand epic journey for between 500 and 1,000 years. It predates the tech boom, the agricultural empire, the Spanish colonies, and the many generations of the nomadic tribal natives that came before us. 
I began to write again and think about how this tree was one of the lucky ones to find its way into the protective boundaries of the open space preserve. Rounding the tiny reservoir, I see my Marshall and Kristoff getting off their bikes at the table. Kristoff charges his bike computer off a power brick. We eat more food as we mentally prepare ourselves for the remaining miles and over 7,000 feet of climbing. I have less than five, 10,000 foot of climbing bike days under my belt, most of which were a touch over 10K. Soon our bodies will be exploring the envelope of our climbing limits as we finish the second half of the ascent up to the skyline ridge of the Santa Cruz mountains.